Yo, guess here, and welcome to What's Up Mod. Have you ever found your house surrounded by zombies and not been able to get in? Well, I've got just the mod for you, and it's called the Swords Plus Mod by Starshades Jack. And here, as you can see, is making light work of all these zombies. So let's uh, get straight into it. There is a crap load of swords added to this, uh, added to the game in this mod. And first off, I'll show you a few crafting recipes, and then we'll go out and test them all out. Okay, first off, as with most mods, there is usually a couple of base items to get you uh, on your way to creating the uh, all the good items in the game. So, first off, we have our empty hilt, and then after that, we have our tempered edge. And these are basically the two main uh, items which can allow you to create the rest of the swords in the game. And by themselves, they don't actually create anything, so you need to start adding other items to them. In saying all this, I do reckon or do think that uh, this is the way that normal Minecraft should be because I think it's a bit too easy. Maybe you could be able to create a wooden sword as you normally do, but then after that, to create the more advanced swords, I think you sh there should be something along these lines because I think it's a bit too easy to create a sword and defend yourself. Okay, so for all the swords, the general layout will be the hilt in the bottom left corner and the tempered edge in the top right corner. So first off um, is the spider eye, and this allows you to create the vanol rapier. Okay, then next with two blaze rods and a bit of flint, you create the blazing blade. Okay, then two gold ingots and a piece of obsidian will give you the dianus blade. Next up, two gas tears and a gold nugget will give Miko's blade. Okay, next up, two lapis lazuli blocks and a bit of soul sand will give the umbra blade. Then three cakes will give us the duff cake sword. Two iron blocks and a piece of diamond will give a great blade. Two gold blocks and a diamond will give a caliber blade. Next up, using two blocks of diamond and an eye of ender will give the Aeon blade. Then the final of all the basic swords is the Goddess Blade, and that is using Cyan Dye and Glowstone Dust. This mod also adds two additional bows to the game, first being the Diamant Bow, and secondly is the Swift Bow, just like a normal bow but with two feathers either side. There have also been several gems added to the game, and this is where the things start to get real exciting, um, but we'll get onto that in a second. So. First of all, we'll just make all the gems, and this is the goddess gem, which is like the base gem for all other gems. Surrounding a goddess gem with all the saplings like this will give an earth elemental gem. Surrounding the goddess gem with buckets of water will give the water elemental gem. And finally, surrounding the goddess gem with eight buckets of lava will give the fire el elemental gem. And it's also good to note that you get all your buckets back when you do do either of the bucket enchantments with the gems. Okay, this covers all the basic crafting in this mod, but then we can move on to the more complex type of uh, swords in the game. And these require these three elemental gems here, but before you can do anything with these elemental gems, they need to be charged. And so, we'll just get rid of this one because we don't need that anymore. So basically, what it states in the mod description is by holding these various gems with you and walking around they will start to pick up energy of their surroundings so I assume you have to be close to the element that you're actually dealing with and then at some point they'll become fully empowered but only once you pray to it and you pray to it by right clicking on it and you notice there that it actually it changed color so the earth gem is now empowered and then I think you can also do the same with the water one I might just try it over here I don't know and that's empowered that and then we'll right click on the fire elemental gem and pray to it and blazing fire gem is made. I think the creator of the mod is also trying to implement something so it's a bit harder to actually empower these and it does do some sort of uh, damage or makes you dizzy or something along those lines which is what I was trying to read into the mod. But anyway, now that we've got these empowered elemental gems we can make the really good swords in the game. Okay, so the Empowered Earth Gem reacts with the Goddess Blade to give the Sacred Goddess Blade. The Empowered Earth Gem also reacts with the Great Blade to give the Titania Blade. 
stepping up the goddess blade once again from the sacred goddess blade you can use it with a soothing water gem to create the divine goddess blade the caliber blade also reacts with the soothing water gem to create the archuria blade stepping up the goddess blade a final time using the blazing fire gem will get with the divine goddess blade will give the chosen blade and the final sword of the mod using the blazing blade with the blazing fire gem will give the megara edge okay so to test these swords out i'm going to attack spiders because they can be alive in daytime and they're not going to attack me unless i go attack them so first of all the venal rapier it uh, will poison anything you attack and i'll let you know of the characteristics of each of the swords as i tell as i go and test them out so let's test this one out and see how long it takes to kill a spider so it should be poison now i'm not sure if it's getting damaged at all doesn't appear to be so you can actually block with this sword the yeah, um, I don't actually know if that was actually poisoning in it or not. I don't know if he's actually getting damaged. Uh, he doesn't... Maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. I don't know. Okay, next up is the Blazing Blade. And just as it sounds, it should put these on fire. There you go. Ooh, that's some pretty hectic fire too. And they're not seeming to attack me back either. Oh, yeah, this one is. I don't know if it'll kill it. No, it doesn't seem to kill it though, in one hit. So this guy here should be pretty close to dead, I think. Yeah, so it all took was one more hit then. So pretty cool sword already. And this is only one of the uh, weakest swords in the mod. Okay, next we got the Dianus Blade. And this blade isn't very strong when it normally hits, but as you saw there, it has a rare chance of critical hitting. And that was obviously a critical hit, where it will do, I think, up to 20 hearts of damage. I think it's 20 hearts of damage. No, 12 hearts of damage it'll do. So 12 hearts of damage, or otherwise, it barely does anything. So I'm not ex exactly sure how rare the uh, critical hit will occur, but it seems to be pretty often actually at the moment. Because I'm sort of killing these in two hits. Okay, next up we have Miko's Blade. And this is a pretty cool sword, this one. Because not only will it heal you of any poison, um, and doing quite a bit of damage, but as you can see this creeper here, as you watch then, the sword just started to glow. So it'll, it'll start glowing when creeper is in with a certain amount of blocks of you. And that was a two hitter, although I did do a critical hit. So they do do quite a bit of damage as well as being, um, you know, protection against creepers creeping up on you. Okay, now we've got the Umber Blade. Now this is like a vampiristic sort of blade, so if you have less than full health, uh, it has a chance of stealing two hearts worth of uh, life from whatever you're attacking. So let's see if we can get it to do this without getting killed. Oh, so it didn't do it that time. It does say infrequently, so I'm not sure how often it does happen. I'm sure we'll get it soon at some stage. Yeah, no, no, not that time either. Come on. Got to get this for some time. I don't have to kill all these spiders. Jeez. Okay, so it seems to be a lot rarer than I thought it was. Okay. Try with a few more spiders one more time. See if we can actually get it to give some health back. Oh, there we go. Got it. At last. So you saw then it absorbed... I think it, did, it does two extra damage but it will also give those two extra damage back to me, or back to the player. Okay, next up is like the novelty sword of the mod, and it's the Duff Cake Sword. So it barely does any damage. In fact, I think it only does half a heart of damage, and it only has 18 durability. So if I hit this guy, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so it took 16 hits, and I think it has two hits remaining on it. But we're not going to use these to kill a spider. If you right-click on this sword, it should redeem some of your hunger. So if I right-click, yeah, you can eat the actual sword. And it's just like eating a cake, I think. Yep, so there we go. 
So I think that was 18 hits in total. So each each time you hit or each time you eat it, it'll do one durability damage. Okay, next is the Great Blade. And this is basically just a normal sword just with extra damage and durability. It's pretty strong, so two hits on these spiders. And actually one hit, one hit if you critical hit them. And it will also last a very long time. Okay, next up is the Caliber Blade. First I should mention that you can't actually block this blade at all, but it is a very powerful sword with very uh, low strength or low durability. So I should hit this and you notice that it uh, it starts to do quite a bit of damage but it, when you're not using it, it will slowly regenerate over time. Okay, next is the AM Blade and this is ridiculously strong in its attack power but very weak durability. But once I show you this, oh, I'll turn the rain off for a second without dying. Okay. So, nearly died then, but once you actually attack a monster and get its durability down, so I'll show you here, we should be able to just clean all these up completely. Notice how the durability is going down really, really fast. If I right click on this sword, it will take my life points in exchange for healing some of its durability. And you notice it took quite a bit then. And I think as it gets um, used again and again, it'll start taking more and more life points until eventually it'll actually kill you. So, oh, we can't pray at the moment. Oh, because it gives a boost. It actually only just gives a boost to the durability. It never actually fully repairs it. Okay, now we have the next set of swords. So the Goddess Blade, it's pretty uh, weak sort of blade actually, until it becomes empowered. Has no special abilities and it's pretty, uh, pretty basic sort of durability. Okay, the Sacred Goddess Blade, it's uh, got nearly twice the attack power and twice the durability. So we should be able, yep, there we go. So two hit in the spiders now. And doesn't quite one hit them with the critical hit. Um, so it's gradually getting better, this Goddess Blade. Okay, next we have the Titania Blade. And this has a few effects. It's pretty damaging for a start, but you also notice it knocks them back and will also slow the mobs down as they come for you. Notice how they've been slowed down. And it's, yeah, two hitting these. I don't know if we can one hit with a crit. No, won't one hit with a crit, but it's definitely slowing them down, as you can see. Okay, next we have the Divine Goddess Blade. Now, this is stepping it up again, and we'll let it do a bit of damage, because uh, on top of all the other effects that the uh, previous Goddess Blade did, this also heals you, as you can see. My hunger's, like, down, down pretty low, but it's still healing me, like, every two seconds or so. So heals half a heart every two to three seconds. Very, very effective sword. Okay, if you remember the Caliber Blade, uh, when it's empowered, it becomes the Archeria Blade. And this is what actually makes it real good. So you remember how the durability of this sword was really, really weak? Well, we'll just, uh, now it's very powerful, but if you give it a rest from battle, which I'm not sure I'll be able to not do because of, I'll just keep clicking. But if you notice, there we go, and if I let it, have a rest for a second, instantly heals back up to full durability. So very, very effective sword. Okay, next is the Chosen Sword. This is probably one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful sword in the game. And other than all the other abilities of all the Goddess Swords when you upgrade them, this also adds the effect of um, not only being much stronger in attack power, but you can also boost the attack power of it. So I should be, yeah, I'll be able to kill all these spiders in one hit. And in fact, we're going to have to get some creepers going for this one, I think. Because it's too powerful for this. Yep, definitely too powerful. Okay, so we've got some creepers and we're going to take them on with the chosen blade. Now, I should also mention that other than the healing factor of this sword, um, the basic healing factor, which is the same as the previous goddess blade, if your food bar is also full, then you should whoa. Then you should be able to heal twice as fast as you normally would with the with the previous goddess blade. Whoa. Okay, so absolutely cleaned up those creepers. And the durability of this is pretty good too. Okay, now we've got the Megara Edge. This is a pretty cool sword. Um, it's the final sword that we have to test out. And it does pretty good damage, but it also light the fire the mob on fire too, which should hopefully kill him. I'm not sure, yeah, okay. So you, you pretty much be able to attack any, like any spider 
you won't be able to do it with creepers. You might have to two hit them. And eventually, you can still also block with it. Don't kill me. And then, yep, should die. Cool. And you also notice that it does use up some durability. But when you're in direct sunlight, it'll heal the durability all back. So you notice there, I'm in full sunlight, so all the durability is coming back. So if we quickly make it night time now, midnight, there we go. And then we'll use loosen durability. I might try and lose a little bit more actually. Okay, so I did a bit more damage to the to the sword. And when you're not in direct sunlight, or say underground for example, when it's not night time, you will not be able to heal it straight away. So if you do find lava though, right click on it and it will absorb the lava and take it back to its full durability. So another very effective sword. Okay, now we've got the two bows and remembering the old school days of Minecraft where you could actually sort of just right click on your bow and shoot arrows. This is sort of the same thing, but it just doesn't quite have the same attack power as, as the old school bow did. So pretty cool. And the arrows don't fly as far either. Yeah, and yeah, definitely does not do anywhere near as much damage as the old bow did. And then moving on to the diamond bow. This is faster than a regular bow and also more powerful. So, there we go. So, you should be able to just barely even hold it back for it to do some serious damage. And you might be able to kill these with one critical bow shot. Nope, wasn't. Uh, yeah, I also mentioned it's very powerful. It says in the uh, description that you should only have to aim like one or two blocks above for a direct hit. So if I hit, try and aim for this spider, just this one here. Yeah, there you go. Very nice. Okay, that covers all the weapons in the mod, but there is also one addition of an ore to the game in this mod, and that's Torvalite Ore. You can mine it with any pickaxe but it's pretty rare to find it under underground and only tends to occur in single vein lots because of its uh, very cool ability actually. So you notice that I did a bit of damage to my wooden pickaxe here. So I think at any durability of uh, whatever item you're using, you can simply chuck some Torvalite dust on top of it and use it on the wooden pickaxe. I don't think it applies for items such as flint and steel and those various things but it definitely works for all tools and armor and weapons. So very, very cool addition, especially because it's so rare in the game. Okay, now wrapping this mod up, as you can see, I've spawned a couple of ender dragons because if you remember from the start of the video, I was using this sword right here. Now there's no crafting recipe as of yet for this sword, nor this sword here. Um, we've got a blade of tower radiance and the Samic blade, but they, in my uh, testings of the mod, these two seem to be the most powerful swords, like ridiculously powerful. So I'll use one on each of the dragons. Hang on, I'll show you this one without getting killed, hopefully. So this is, you know, been, I think like seven hits or something to kill this dragon. I think it'll take seven-ish. If I can actually find it, where are you? I think I'm hitting the wrong dragon now because there's two of them around me. Um, but I assume the second sword in the out of the two is going to be made from that Tauvalite ore, which I showed you just a second ago. I think I might be up too high to actually hurt these guys. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So that's killed one of them. And now we'll kill this guy with this sword. And that was pretty quick with this one. I think the Tauvalite sword is the or the Blade of Tower Radiance is the most powerful of them all. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this mod. Let me know what you thought of it. And we've got a couple of end portals going on here too. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with this. But anyway, um, as I said, guest are here. This has been the Swords Plus mod. And...